Hello everyone and welcome to fourth part of Airline Sim Tutorials where I'm gonna cover more stuff uh, that is let's say more complicated than uh, the basics I tried to explain in the first three parts and if you haven't seen them I say go and watch them first so you understand what I'm talking about now for this tutorial we're gonna use the company I created uh, about 14 no three weeks ago it's called Yanair and it's uh, based in the country Myanmar in Asia uh, with its head office in the capital which is Yangon now those of you who know a bit about uh, Burma or Myanmar uh, is the same country it was just renamed you know that it's not a very let's say destination where many people would uh, be heading now I wanted to take this one because it's really uh, secluded when you check um, the capital city where I'm based you see that only a handful of companies are actually flying there and even though I'm a very small company I already cover quite a lot of uh, well, the traffic in Yangon and I'm gonna give it a second to load and uh, show you a bit more about uh, the company uh, Yan Air is did it won? No, not yet. Uh, Yan Air is a very small company which uh, has one Bombardier Canada Regional Jet 200 extended range and four sub 300 plus planes. Now as you can see I own these which is uh, something I never done before if you saw my other uh, airlines Al Jazeera Airways and Al Jazeera International which are in one holding uh, the parent company being Al Jazeera Airways you probably noticed that oh uh, yeah we're here um, you probably noticed that all my points were leased now uh, Yangon let me let me talk about this a bit see then uh, with basically five very small planes I already cover half of uh, the airport's traffic uh, which is something that uh, I never managed to do up until now uh, Myanmar is a real interesting starting uh, place it has uh, several domestic destinations that you might want to go to uh, so I connect several of these cities in uh, domestic traffic uh, market now uh, why I'm saying this is because uh, Yangon is one of the cities um, sorry uh, Myanmar is one of the countries that many people would um, not choose as their destination but you can see that I manage quite a lot of extensive domestic traffic uh, with the exception of Singapore and Bangkok which are one two of the main cities uh, in the location uh, when we look at my offices uh, of my company which shows you the statistics uh, of mainly the world factors you can see that almost everywhere uh, yeah with the exception of Mandalay every oh and Mieik, uh but that's a new destination every domestic route that I've covered is having a hundred percent load factor so this company is blooming incredibly uh, what I, well, um, I picked the planes for this company uh, because they're really small and they're really efficient so the Saab has 37 passengers tops while the C, uh, CRJ uh, Canada Regional Jet is having 52 this one serves uh, Bangkok and Singapore while uh, the Saabs serve my domestic traffic now I'm talking about this and showing you this company because a lot of people uh, messaged me that they're having trouble uh, starting up in a company uh, starting their company somewhere in the world that they're having uh, trouble starting everywhere and when I suggested uh, Rangoon to several of them they were all like no we don't like this uh, country it's gonna be hard and there's really nothing to do so 
think twice about what you're gonna do before you start because uh, not every country is bad even though it may seem really secluded now uh, I created the company that's really taking the best of uh, Myanmar and now will come the hard part expansion however it's uh, still safer to start like this with a small company in a secluded country creating a small hub there's a lot of countries around us China India you can fly to Thailand Vietnam and later you would surf as a connection between I don't know Russia Europe and Australia well it's up to you what you do uh, just wanted to point out that uh, countries that are completely devoid of life are usually the best ones to start in despite the, despite the fact that they don't have any big airports in them but I wasn't uh, I did not want to talk about uh, that in the first place uh, my point was uh, that I own this aircraft which is a strategy I never tried before but it's working quite well uh, I want to show you something now when you look on Al Jazeera Airways which is my original company it has at the moment uh, over 6 airplanes if I'm not mistaken yeah 63 now some of these are really small like the wet points um, of which I have 11 but still it's 63 airplanes and when you look at my income statement you will see that uh, the total net worth of this company is really high uh, the total passenger revenue just in the last three weeks was 47 million airlines and dollars and the net worth of the company is around 77.2 million airlines and dollars which is not that much there are companies that you have much higher value but still I want to illustrate one point if you look at the loans I can only get about half a million at once and if I went to the top limit I would get I don't know about 2 million maybe maybe 1.5 with Yanair, this is different. I used the initial money to get four. No, I got three subs. Uh, three subs, which uh, totally. I think it was like nine million. Yeah, the price. I I, I bought some uh, of the older ones around sixteen years so of age. So you can see you can get a sixteen point seven year old sub for two million right now. Sub is a really efficient airplane. So. Um, and it's not as big as dashes so I never tried it before and I said hey let's try some subs because I like these uh, airplanes and one of the Czech companies uh, used them so I bought free subs and set basic routes now when these filled 100% in the first demand calculation round I decided to buy more and here comes the interesting part I went to the loans section uh, let's wait for it to load. I'm not sure if I didn't switch to a different company. Did I? Come on, come on. It's taking so long. <laughs> Did my internet just crash? did my internet just oh no it didn't cool and I got a loan of three million dollars just like that the bank gave me because uh, I have owned airplanes and so the bank is really uh, willing to lend me incredible amount of money you can see that the interest is nowhere near real life data so I have well it's a it's a weak interest but still uh, point 0.8 interest is really low and I'm I was able to repay this like half of this loan before I got actually this debt was the original one later on I got the three million loan and with the combined it with the profit I made I bought uh, 
the Canada Regional Jet 200 I own now. Now you see that I already have uh, 4.2 million of debt and the bank will still lend me at least I would say 4 million dollars. So it's up to you whether you lease or you uh, buy aircraft but both strategies have a lot of merits to themselves. I'm actually quite uh, interested in buying airplanes now and I might go for that in uh, some time because uh, it's uh, it's more stable the company is much more stable when you look at the, the financial shadow we talked about this in the last video you see that I basically have just the weekend closing which is two hundred seventy thousand dollars now that's a payment for my uh, staff and yeah basically for my staff and some of the loan payments which are not all that high I will repay these loans in I don't know a month maybe a month and a half and then I'm off and the company uh, the bank will lend me eight or nine million dollars at once which is enough to buy three more airplanes and I own them in the case I would like to switch to a different way I can lease them out and I have a stable profit from them forever now if you check uh, Al Jazeera Airways uh, which is uh, my original company I have an incredible amount of uh, money deductions and uh, I have to pay a lot of leasings uh, leases so overall in a week I pay 7.45 million airline sim dollars uh, with just around 2.1 million uh, for the staff the rest I just throw out of the window so what I think is that uh, the sum of this is that if you buy airplanes it might be a better choice for starting players because your company might be much more stable and in the long run it's a better strategy as well I don't really know but this gave me an impression that it might be uh, worth it you have to start with smaller airplanes and in a secluded market so you don't face such incredible uh, competition from other bigger companies but it's weird how, how little people use it in the game even the biggest companies uh, in USA some of incredible huge companies in USA uh, use lease only strategy like American International for example I think they they're uh, lease only come on I don't want you to continue well yeah they own like five aircraft out, out of uh, 380 so this is the basic strategy for everyone now again I'm heading somewhere with this uh, you can have a company that's a uh, lease only, you own a lease airplanes. You have a company uh, that buys aircraft and there are several other types of companies on airline sim which you can encounter. There are lease providers. These are companies that uh, buy aircraft and puts them on the market and lease them out to other players. So they're basically a market oriented company that's not too afraid but uh, they're usually a subsidiary American International could have uh, such company if they uh, would be willing they could uh, put let's say 50 million in a new company which would buy let's say 20 subs and put them on the market for people to lease uh, the thing is that there can be no uh, airplane on the market on a for lease uh, from computer which is uh, the, there are several leasing companies owned by a computer if they have age over three years so if you lease from um, the game itself the only available airplanes are the ones up to uh, three years of age I'm having a bit of a problem here with loading. Man, my uh, 
opera is just dicking with me lately. I guess I'll reload it. Okay, anyways, uh, back to my point. Now, uh, if you... Oh, that's the problem. I switched between airlines. Now, if you... Uh, um, you have to think just about one thing. Leasing older aircraft is uh, easier because you don't pay so, pay so much for these costs and uh, generally the airplane is flying for less because the lease cost is one of the biggest expenses you will have connected with the airplane. Now, uh, there's just one thing you need to think about uh, while leasing an aircraft and that is uh, its age cannot be too high. Uh, for example, with my, come on, again, with my SOPs, uh, which have 17.8 years, uh, you can see that uh, some of the flight ratings won't be so high. Yeah, aircraft age is marked really wrong. Now this, uh, really bad, now this doesn't uh, pose a big problem because I'm flying domestic uh, flights only with them, so I don't really care. They have no other possibility than me, so I don't really have to worry about it. But on long haul market or when you get, um, when you're facing a uh, bigger competition on a oversaturated uh, route, you should really think about the age. Now the fourth type of companies uh, are, well, uh, they're shareholding companies. <laughs> Uh, one thing that you can do when okay, let me let me start this way. Uh, when I created Al Jazeera Airways, it's called the parent or holding company. Uh, there was a slight difference, so uh, slight change in this in um, the past year or year and a half. So I might not be exactly up to term. Uh, with the names. However, the parent or holding company is the company you create. Now, I have two uh, separate, Al Jazeera Airways and Yanair. Now, you see a parent company when uh, it owns ever, uh, no, let me start it this way. The parent company uh, can create subsidiaries, which is in this case Al Jazeera International. What happened was that um, in well let's say half a year after I started Al Jazeera Airways I accumulated like 60 or 70 million dollars and I wasn't sure what to do with them so I went to uh, create a new company and I made the parent company Al Jazeera Airways and used its money uh, to start a new enterprise now there's a minimum of three million airlines in dollars, so I couldn't do it right now. Uh, at the time I had like thirty million, and I created uh, Al Jazeera Airways uh, International with the Al Jazeera International. Now you can see that I own hundred percent of my shares in Al Jazeera International, but I could introduce it to the stock market. Now uh, there are couple of uh, stock markets in the game uh, there's Johannesburg, Frankfurt, Bolsa, Mexicana, New York uh, in Sao Paulo, Tokyo, Dubai and Australian Stock Exchange if I wanted as a parent company I could sell part of uh, Al Jazeera International on the market as in real world I would create something that's called uh, IPO and introduce my company to other players and they can buy shares in that company uh, which is uh, good and bad it has two two sides now uh, the good side is that you get and you can get insane amount of cash for example, for 20% of the IPO is always 20% of the shares. So, uh, in uh, let's say 20, for those 20% of the shares, if I created enough of, and gave out enough of information and players would like what I'm doing, they would buy the shares and could get them really high 
and it would rake millions of the market. The, that's the good side. And this money, uh, this money go to the parent company, which is Al Jazeera Airways. So in case you're in the need of cash for um, expansion or whatever plans you might have, uh, this can be a really good step. The bad part is that you're giving up part of your profit. Um, when the company gets on the market, part of its uh, part of its um, profit, I think it's twenty percent. Twenty percent of your uh, week profit goes to the shareholder, uh, which would be in eighty percent. It would be Al Jazeera Airways and twenty to whoever bought those shares. That's the downside. Later on, you can sell even more shares from uh, Al Jazeera International. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, get even more money, I could sell another ten percent on the market. So, there's a really functioning stock market in built-in airline sim. However, this uh, feature will be removed later on I'm not sure when uh, it will be there will be a different uh, it won't be removed it will be rebuilt there are no announced plans how this will work but if there were there was any kind of cheating in airline sim it was 95% uh, uh, done on the stock market uh, people were buying and selling their shares and trying to uh, you know raise their price and make additional profit in an illegal way that's forbidden by the rules but you, you get cheaters everywhere however so far the market is uh, to stay and as you can see there are uh, people selling and buying shares getting profit out of them and it kind of works quite well you can see uh, the last changes, the amount of percentage, the price, the volume, things like that. Uh, it's quite detailed, actually. Uh, this is the detail of the stocks. You can, if you introduce your company to the market, uh, it reports its uh, cash flow, equity, liabilities. Um, profit and stuff like that is balanced to the shareholders so if it gets into the problem um, yeah <laughs> you probably will see a downfall of your stocks as in real life so I saw a company once uh, just once but you can create a company that will just buy and trade stocks on the market and make profit out of that it's an interesting idea I've never I've seen it just once there was a company it was called something like American Stock Exchange American uh, stock uh, trading company or something like that it was just it was a parent company it had no airplanes whatsoever but it was huge it had like hundred million dollars in invested in other companies and living off uh, their profit and it worked as an investment company it was really interesting so that's another thing you can do in airline sim if you need uh, any money you can sell parts of your companies later on you can uh, buy them back if uh, the owners are you know interested in uh, helping you they can sell you um, the stocks for Let's say you sold them for 500, so you will offer them 600 to sell them to you back. Uh, but still, it's a it's a real interesting uh, feature of the game that I haven't covered yet. So if you're on Airline Sim, I say you give it a go, uh, see what you can do there. However, a rule of thumb: you can never sell shares of your parent company. You can't because. Uh, you can sell away your company. Uh, for example, I could sell away Al Jazeera International if I lost uh, more than 50% of the stock uh, that I own and someone else would get that. So for example, I sell, I do an IPO, sell 20% to one big company, then I sell them 10 more percent and then I sell them 21 more percent. So now they own 51 and I own just 49 that makes me uh, a holder with only 49 
percent of the company and the one that owns 51 would effectively and immediately gain control of the game of uh, the company in the game so that means i would no longer control al jazeera international as um, your stockholders will not own your company if they own i don't know 15 or 80 or 20 or 30 how matter how much you decide to sell but be careful about that you cannot sell too much and you can never sell anything from your parent company so if you want to get on the market people usually do one simple trick they create a parent company and then they invest all of that starting money into another company so I would start with Yanair if I intended ever to go to a market I would start with Yanair and then immediately before I would lease an airplane I would create let's say Yanair International and that one uh, I would play with and later on I can um, you know put it on the market rake some money and the parent company Yanair could create another let's say Yanair domestic company or whatever you wish I hope you understand the system it's a bit more complicated but um, it's logical you can never sell your own company you can only sell something it owns now um, yeah I already ex um, I already explained stock market and IPOs um, pros and cons of buying airplanes uh, loans okay uh, one thing I would like to talk about now is the uh, is the community on airline sim. Now there's uh, as with many games like this, uh, there are the forums which you can uh, use to get additional information and help from the players. Uh, the announcements are something uh, really important, but usually they are also on airline sim itself so you can see them uh, here then there are, um, the development logbook is a really nifty thing where uh, the developers announce what they're gonna do what they did on each day and they discuss it with players or usually they announce what they did and then there's a rage storm where people you know attack each other whether it's good or bad or anything um, you can see updates to the server status in case uh, there's a crash on one of them or anything. Uh, user advisory board. Uh, these are the people that dedicate part of their lives to helping new players. So uh, it's really, they, they go around these forums and ask uh, and help. Then they don't ask, but they help each other and um, the newbie players in the community support and if you have any questions you can use these forums of course um, then there are these uh, forums they are either on international boards they are uh, in German and then there's the English boards and if I'm not mistaken there should be there was one more well obviously there isn't oh yeah they are here sorry so then there's uh, there's the general official boards, then there are the English boards, uh, the German boards, and then there's uh, Portuguese boards, uh, one uh, for the Dutch people, one, this is Chinese, I guess, sorry if it's not, I, I have trouble, you know, distinguishing Chinese from Japanese, but I would say this is uh, Chinese, or maybe it's not, I really don't know. Um, and there's a Spanish one. Interesting enough, there's no French one. I would say I would guess that French. Oh, there's no French. Anyways, uh, and then there are some uh, some for game worlds. Now these game worlds uh, are really really good uh, to check because you can see a lot of information here, uh, like announcements for IPOs in case you're. Uh, for a market people usually try to inform about going um, on the market they try to get people invest in them like this one hi there have uh, some bucks left and no idea where to spend them invest in Turkey shares of the only airline connecting you to Europe and the Middle East 
in safe and comfortable aircraft with superior catering are available on Saturday. This is an old one from December. A couple of hours before the closing of FIPO, board of directors will thank all the initial bidders. Yep, so so this uh, person, KSNRR, uh, used this board to inform people that he's doing an IPO. Uh, there are alliances here searching for new members. So it's a, it's a really nifty one. However, lately uh, the forums had not that much activity, which is kind of sad. Uh, most of the activity is on the official boards and English boards and on the servers. Uh, now, people usually create even things like this, they own libraries. Uh, like this one was created for me by my friend when I started, um, I when I got my first uh, uh, Boeings, he, he created this picture for me, uh, remade um, a white no library plane uh, to my needs. And I used it to um, to advertise my own company on the forums so I would have an easier access to the alliance. Alliances are something you uh, should really try to uh, see and what you should try to reach because they provide um, a home on airlines and where people will try to help you and uh, work with you and even even uh, support you and protect you from uh, excessive um, excessive uh, <sighs> um, excessive hostile players from other countries that are trying to ruin your um, life. <laughs> Uh, and last but not least, uh, I want to talk a bit about um, the future of Erwin Sim. Uh, now, a really thrilling thing was uh, announced a couple of uh, days ago that Erwin Sim is gonna do a thing that I was always wishing for, and that is uh, really something that will give the world and game uh, more effect. Uh, apart from the new airplanes that will be introduced uh, to the game, they created something that's called, well, uh, they call it the market index, if I'm not mistaken. Or, wait, I'll find it. Oh. So how they did do the patch, I missed this one. They're for data for Africa. South Sudan is now an independent country. Um, yeah, so they felt some. Uh, anyways, I missed this one and it caused me a lot of trouble. Uh, shadow downtime. No, I'm. Uh, hold on, guys. I'm uh, searching for one thing. Damn it. There was an announcement. Uh, Was it in the development logbook? No, these are just... So it must have been in the announcements. I just missed it. Investment holdings. Airline Sim Awards. Shadow Downtown. Man, I can never found a thing when I need... Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, so far, there were two ways how the situation in Airline Sim changed. A, it was, um, it was, wait, where is it? No, it's on the home. Yep, it was the fuel prices. Now, uh, fuel prices copy the real world price. So you can see that um, about two years ago, uh, the fuel prices were the, uh, on the bottom of their price. Now, they're really high, so uh, Al Jazeera Airways and Al Jazeera International and even Yan Air are suffering because we pay so much for fuel, and they still grow. And I can uh, honestly say that I've been noticing this as my profit go goes down all the time because I pay insane amount for fuel. But this was so far the only uh, change that was going on in the game. They had this. And when the big companies bankrupted, the demand was always the same, apart from uh, constant patching and demand uh, updates from the developers. They, from time to time, they tweak, they change the airport size, 
when it grows they made it bigger when it was uh, getting less significant they made it smaller so it copied uh, the world except for the economic cycle now they are going to introduce uh, something that's gonna look like this but it's gonna be called the market index uh, basically it means that let's say there's um, a line right here that says normal and if it goes up there will be more people wanting to fly with your airline and you know trying to uh, get on board your airplanes and there will be more demand for everyone however it could also go down which would create a lot of problems for most airplanes as the demand will diminish and there will be less people wanting to fly with you. Now I'm really thrilled about this because it will create a dynamic in the game where even the big and the small have to uh, you know, deal with the situation. It won't be like a change on a daily basis. They said it will be a weekly update. Uh, so it won't be like you know, one day you have 100% filled plane and the next it's empty. You know, it will be, uh, you know, 100, then like 95, 90, at, at least I hope. And that's what the developers said. So you will have to face the market itself. Uh, so far it was announced that this market index will be completely random, which is good. And it will be different for every server. And later on, even there's a possibility for having harder servers and more relaxed where these changes, but that was not confirmed. It's just, uh, you know, information uh, that I acquired from um, personal chat with one of the developers. They were thinking about it, but uh, first part will be introducing this uh, market dynamic. This will be a huge change for the game uh, because Imagine that you have a company that's having millions of people transported every day. You have thousands of planes and suddenly a recession will hit. So this may really clear the market. There's been some huge gigantic companies that has been running on an auto autopilot still making millions of dollars and nobody was uh, able to deal with them they were too big now these companies will be too uh, too big to survive they will have to you know they will start losing money at some point uh, when the market uh, will hit the low and eventually they will bankrupt because they're not being governed so it will create more breathing space but it will make the com uh, make the game uh, more hard or more well, not more hard. The bigger you will grow, the harder it will be. But on the other hand, you will have much bigger net. So, who knows? However, anyways, it will be a more dynamic uh, game. And there will be more to face. And it will drag the players into it even more. I can't imagine how it will work on a crowded server like Templehof. Uh, yet alone on Croydon. But I'm looking forward to it so much that you can't even imagine because uh, I really wish for this because it will test us even more. And the game has been already incredibly good in uh, simulating the real world environment with all the demand, uh, you know, all the stock exchanges, uh, all the problems, including your airplanes, all the loans and, uh, you know, alliances. And now, with uh, the market itself changing, it will be almost perfect. And a last thing I wanted to tell you guys, uh, it was announced that there will be a new, completely new server uh, ready in a time that is yet to be specified. But if you ever wanted to try this game or have a queer start, if you tried it now, uh, just keep your eyes open for the announcements and you might see another server opening right here soon with zero players and you will have a fresh start with everyone. And I think that the new server will introduce uh, new planes and with a bit of a luck even this uh, new market index thing. So yeah, 
looking towards that a lot. Now, this is the last part of um, my Airline Sim tutorials. I hope I covered uh, everything. Uh, I covered... Yeah, I think I covered everything. All the basics in the game. Uh, the different now even the difference between owned and leased airplanes from the you know expansion side. Um, I covered all the fleets, all the maintenance, uh, onboard services, uh, leasing, you know, loans, stock exchanges, subsidiaries and portfolio. That's uh, part of the stock market uh, alliances, and you should also understand these things. So yeah, that's all from me, and in case you will ever have any questions, feel free to contact me in-game or outside of the game on YouTube, and in case there will be enough questions, in time I will make a fifth part where I will answer um, everything that I will be asked in the future. So, as always, all the best from me, have fun, and happy flying!